Hello and welcome back to another Archaeoscope. Now this series is kind of like an inverted Questions of Doom, where rather than you sending me a question to research and try and answer to the best of my ability, I put a question out there for you guys to consider. And together we discuss in the comments below or on Facebook or whatever, and we come up with a solution which on our own we might not have considered. A uh, sort of a meta response to the question of the day. Now today's Archaeoscope isn't so much a question as a follow-up to something which I, well, to a question that I posed uh, almost a year ago. Uh, at the end of July last year, before we moved to the new Archaeosoup Towers, I posed the question about imagining the future and whether or not people in the past did in fact take time to imagine the future. Now, we had to very quickly discount certain types of imaginings. Uh, one of them would be, say, imaginings which are based on um, predictions, which are based on observations of, of predictable cycles and events. So, for example, planning for next winter um, and imagining the different scenarios which may unfold, say, in your food, in your crops, in, in, your, in your livestock, um, <clears> or <throat> where you have to travel, maybe, if, if you're a bit more nomadic. That is a, that is a, for, <clears throat> a form of imagining the future. But... It's not really what we're talking about. Um, this is actually actually planning in the present based on the past. It's not really imagining the future. So, so we discounted that. Uh, another example of, I suppose, a, a type of imagining the future is actually prophecy. So uh, religious pr uh, predictions or imagery about, say, the end of the world or a special individual coming um, uh, one day or, or, or for example, um, uh, a very, very artistic, artistic, very uh, elaborate uh, imagery, which can be in, in, interpreted in many different ways, and therefore can people can go, oh, you see, they were talking about now, they were talking about the future, um, but isn't really actually specific. Anyone could actually take these different sections of uh, certain philosophers' writings or certain religious uh, writings and say that it, was, that it was an accurate prediction if they wanted to on a certain day. So, so we're talking about very specific predictions and imaginings about the future, not just uh, prophecies and, um, and and associated imagery. And uh, and we were really struggling to come up with one. It was really actually quite difficult to to to, to come up with a uh, a prediction about the future which wasn't one of those two types. Um, that is to say, from the past. Because imagining the future is something that which, which we do all the time uh, today. Uh, Star Trek, Star Wars, um, uh, the, the dystopian futures that you see in, in Hollywood blockbusters, the, uh, uh, the, the writings of um, uh, I think people like, uh, like Jules Verne, you know, this kind of thing, um, or, uh, or, or any number of, I mean, in 1984, and uh, a number of, of imaginative works in the past, 50 to 100 years have invoked a sense of what the future will be like and often this this actually involves a, a, a reasonable step beyond today's technology so for example space travel we're on the cusp it is thought of being able to travel to Mars um, and maybe even set up a colony there and therefore for example in, in the very near future we're going to be getting a film starring uh, Matt Damon um, uh, as, as a guy who's stranded on Mars. And, and these are, I suppose, science fiction. This, this is science fiction because it hasn't happened yet. But they're also imaginings about the future. It's an important part of modern society to imagine the future. And, uh, and therefore, as I say, I was wondering whether or not people did this in the past. And we really struggled to think of anything which would actually fitted this criteria, which would actually... Um, uh, I suppose, stand out as something beyond the ordinary. You know, imagining a future which is different, substantially different from the present in which people were living. Well, in the past, uh, I don't know, past week or so, past couple of weeks, a, a book has come to my attention about a very particular individual uh, from the 13th century. So that's the 1200s AD. Now this is very important, that's the reason why I'm emphasising when he came from. Uh, he comes from before the Renaissance uh, and uh, what many people would think of as, you know, there's the proper Middle Ages. You know, he's, he's kind of in there, you know, he's post, post Norman, uh, Norman invasion of Britain, 1200s, that, that's where he's from. Uh, he is a man called Roger Bacon. Now Roger Bacon was a philosopher, 
um, as a younger man and a chap who, who became a Franciscan friar. He uh, was from Oxford in the south of England and at certain points in his life, for example, went to Paris uh, and met various people. But he, he, he eventually ended up living uh, a fairly solitary uh, life, um, certainly in terms of his contemplations. And out of his contemplations came some remarkable things. He's often described as being the first scientist. Now that's a bold claim and the, the book that I came across is called The First Scientist. But he's, he's certainly a one of the fathers of modern science. Um, he dis described the requirement that in order to understand the truth of the world around us and the physical realm in which we find ourselves, observation and experimentation is crucial in, a, in, in order to dispel what is, what is false and f home in, fix in on what is true. Um, he uh, obviously did his religious duties very well, uh, but also at times he came um, came into as friction with his with his brothers uh, because of some of his imaginings. Uh, for example, he uh, talked about the co the mechanics of the cosmos. He's actually into in, uh, instrumental in developing optics uh, and in many ways some of the things that we now associate with telescopes. So he's a very very clever chap doing an awful lot of thinking in the 1200s. Um, he, uh, he wrote a treatise which described the composition of gunpowder. Um, and you might be going, okay, this is all well and good. Brilliant, okay, we get it, he's clever. What makes this man stand out in the way that, that you've been describing, Mr. Soup? Well, what makes him stand out is that he, in the 1200s, described <clears throat> and predicted with some confidence now eventually there would be uh, flying machines, this is before Leonardo uh, famously drew his flying machines, and also talked about the, uh, the, the probability of horseless carriages. Uh, he, he, he imagined what would become the automobile, I suppose, or the car. Now, obviously, he couldn't imagine what they would look like or what they would be like, but he was talking at a time when people could not have possibly comprehended um, unaided uh, um, vehicular transportation. You might argue that steam automatons, say from the Greek world and the Roman world uh, a thousand years prior, um, could could have inspired or could have been used, that technology could have been used to drive a vehicle. But it didn't seem as though anyone really applied it to vehicular transportation. And he didn't it's, as far as I can tell, he didn't actually apply this. He didn't actually try and create a vehicle, a horseless carriage. But he certainly talked about the fact that they would probably happen. And this, out of all my research, all my conversations with various people, this is the one instance that I've come across where someone talks about something which is beyond the world in which he lives or she lives. He's talking about a future development which he hopes will happen, obviously he can't know it will happen, and uh, and he puts it out there and people go, oh, okay, interesting. Some people say, can you please stop talking about that because, because you're freaking it out. Um, <clears throat> and and he was for a short time, it seems, um, uh, the, the subject of some uh, some frustration um, with, with his religious order. But nonetheless, his ideas were written down and have survived. And this is so interesting. I think we might have identified someone doing what it is that, for example, uh, futurologists, science fiction writers, um, inventors do today. And that is creating and thinking about something completely out there in the future and trying to, to maybe even get to that point. So I don't know, I just thought I'd bring this guy to your attention. Francis, no, not Francis, sorry, Roger Bacon. Sorry, I always get that get different Bacon's model. But he didn't say Kevin Bacon, that would have been bad. Kevin Bacon predicted them. <laughs> but no, yeah, so Roger Bacon, fascinating, fascinating character. Definitely going to get hold of a copy of this book, I think, and have a, have a proper read. Uh, I've read a little bit of his, his wiki page and I have a little bit of other sources here and there. Um, I, I really want to read like this, his biography now, actually, because this guy sounds really, really intriguing. Um, and this is in the 1200s. The 1200s AD, the AD 1200s, that's when he's from, and he's talking about horseless 
carriages, um, vehicular transport, automation of vehicles, um, the automobile mobile. So really, really interesting stuff. And I just thought, I thought I'd just follow on from that question that I asked last year and bring this to your attention. What do you guys think? Do you think this actually counts? Because obviously he didn't, he didn't seem as it doesn't seem as though he actually came up with a, with a, uh, with a methodology. All he did was say, well, it could happen one day, you know, probably will. That's all he did. He didn't, he didn't, but then again, I mean, you know, when, when people, uh, wrote about going to the moon, around 100 years ago or maybe a little bit more than 100 years ago they didn't really have the full methodology down they just said well it's probably going to happen one day um and I, I know, i'm just really excited by this so what, what do you guys think uh, and have you come across anything since that video last year uh, along these lines because i'm really i'm really really interested in trying to tie down this question of whether or not imagining the future a different future, not just the continuation of your own society, or imagining like a 1,000 year empire or whatever, you know, like a, like a Roman view. Um, I want to see if, they, if these imaginings actually are somewhat diagnostic of the modern, modern-ish world. Anyway guys, um, I've rambled on for long enough about this, I'm really excited by it, hopefully you will be too. As ever, until next time, please do stay safe and also take care of yourself and those around you. As ever, until next time, bye bye.